Hey guys, I'm Rich, welcome back to the channel. With the recent release of the new 14 inch MacBook Pro, I wanted to take the time and compare this to my $900 base model MacBook Air with the M1 chip. I had the M1 Air for over a year now, and I think the decision between buying the Pro versus the Air is harder than ever. Both of these great laptops features Apple's new M1 silicon chip, although the Pro, as the name implies, has the M1 Pro, which gives it a boost in performance. That's why in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at if the Pro is worth that extra money. I wanna talk about the overall user experience. So. Let's talk about it. All right, so when you put these Macs side by side closed, the Pro doesn't look that much larger. Apple managed to make the bezels of the display even thinner and added an extra inch of screen to make the display even larger. Now, in my opinion, the display is definitely better than the Air. The Pro sports a resolution of 3024 by 1964p compared to the 2560 by 1600p screen on the Air. This is without a doubt a very noticeable difference. The max display brightness on the Pro is higher than the Air coming in at around 1600 nits compared to 400 nits on the MacBook Air. And the Pro's 120Hz screen is just eye candy. Everything looks very smooth, the ProMotion display looks great. Whenever I scroll across macOS Monterey, the 120Hz display doesn't work on everything though. So I wouldn't get too excited that the MacBook Pro has that extra hertz screen because it's not used all the time. Overall, the screen on the Pro is definitely pleasant to look at. In this case, uh, the Pro wins it in my book. Next up is the weight. I will say this now, the Pro is actually really great for what it is. It's very powerful while being very light, coming in at around 3.5 pounds. But when you compare this to the MacBook Air, it's definitely much heavier. The Air comes in at around 2.8 pounds or 1.2 kilos. And in my opinion, the Air feels so much better. I haven't felt a laptop as thin as this and light as this, maybe other than the Surface Laptop 4. I mean, carrying this around, it just feels so nice in the hand. The speakers on the Pro are much more stronger than the Air. There's more bass on it. Uh, it does have support for spatial audio when playing music or video with Dolby Atmos on built-in speakers. Other than that, both Macs rock Apple Magic Keyboard, which delivers strong tactile performance and comfort. I do think the Pro's keyboard feels a little bit more, how would you say, satisfying? Just a teeny tiny more than the Air. That probably is to the deeper travel because the MacBook Pro is thicker. Finally, the Pro has ports like the MagSafe, HDMI, SD card readers that have been re-added. So thank you so much, finally. Now these ports that have been re-added aren't necessarily like a deal breaker for me. It's really nice to see them like get added back. I've gotten really used to having like no ports using the MacBook Air. Hence why I always use a dongle. With the Pro, I mean, it's still lacking a USB-A port. So I still find myself using a dongle with the MacBook Pro. Yeah, so it's not like I entirely just ditched a dongle for the Pro. That's just something to keep in mind, especially when I wanna plug in a mouse. Now, as we talk about performance, this is where things start to get a little bit different. The Pro, as you would expect, is gonna be faster than the Air because, well, it's a Pro, but let's dive in technically with all the stats. Then I'll tell you what I personally noticed between these two and show you how it is in video editing. The M1 and M1 Pro theoretically have the same CPU performance, but Apple's change to the number of high power and low power cores in the M1 Pro gives it a slight edge over the M1 Air. Simple tasks like running Spotify and Google Chrome will not benefit from the M1 Pro's performance boost, I feel like they're the same on the Air, I mean, speed-wise. However, when we get into multi-core performance, the M1 Pro starts to get the edge here. Now, if we're taking a look at Geekbench benchmark, the performance difference is not that huge. Let me show you real quick. It comes in around 1767 for a single core in use and 9948 for the Pro, while 1732 for a single core and 7678 for the MacBook Air. That's around like a thousand point difference between the M1 Air and the M1 Pro. Remember, this is your base model MacBook Air that we're talking about here with eight gigabytes of RAM. The numbers aren't that significant. And now when we talk about the GPU, the Pro has 14 cores compared to seven cores in the Air, which is literally double. This means that you're gonna get faster image processing when it comes down to rendering photos or videos. The Pro 14 inch comes straight out of the box with 16 gigabytes of memory compared to the base model Air with eight gigs. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because having that extra RAM will definitely help in the long run. Really the biggest takeaway that I gathered on these machines was when it came down to DaVinci Resolve. I edit all full length 1080p footage, 30 frames per second with a considerable amount of effects, transitions, and light color grading. The Pro just eats through it like it's crazy fast and this could be due to the extra cores in the GPU and the added RAM. And for the test, I render the same 4K timeline with a few transitions and color grades 
on all the clips for both machines. You can see that the MacBook Pro came in at around two minutes and 31 seconds for that 4K timeline versus the MacBook Air, which rendered it at three minutes and 23 seconds. So take what you want with those stats. It's literally just a minute difference. If you're gonna have a larger timeline with more effects, the MacBook Air is only gonna be slower by a few minutes, maybe a few seconds. It's nothing too major in my opinion. So yeah, all right, you, you saw the performance, you saw the design. Which one should you really buy? In my honest, humble opinion, for the average person out there who just wants a laptop for everyday needs, I think the $900 M1 base model MacBook Air is perfectly fine, if not, great for what it is. You can still edit photos, you can still edit like real, you know, full length videos on this machine. And if you were gonna get the 16 gigabyte MacBook Air, which is around $1399, I would consider getting the M1 Pro instead for $2,000. Just getting those nice added features because that, you know, dollar difference is a lot. I don't think the average person out there needs anything beyond the air, unless you are that person that is gonna be editing 4K timelines, rendering models on CAD, or you just want those nice extra ports with a premium feel and a nicer display, then yes, the Pro is definitely justifiable. For me at least, I would recommend the base model MacBook Air to almost all my friends and family. And unless you're that one friend who I think will need and appreciate that sheer extra power because you do those intense and heavy programs, then I say get the Pro. Anyways, thanks for watching the entire video. This is Rich. Tell me what you think of the laptops. Do you have one of the machines yourself? Are you looking at buying one? Which one are you thinking of getting? Let me know down in the comments below. And that's all I got for you in this one. So until next video, guys, stay safe and I'll see you then.